want to turn now to the Ukraine. The standoff in the Ukraine at a fever pitch this morning with the people of Crimea voting on how much to pull away from the Ukraine and towards Russia and Russian troops making moves to strengthen their presence across the region. ABC's Alex Marquardt is right in the middle of it all and he joins us now. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, George. Voters have been coming to polling stations like this one across Crimea all day. There is little suspense in this historic vote. Crimeans, those who aren't boycotting, expected to vote overwhelmingly in favor of joining Russia. Amid new fears, President Putin is looking to expand his grip in Ukraine. This morning, we drove with 27-year-old Damian Koslov as he went to cast his vote to join Russia. It's a holiday. For Damian, the vote means going back home. I'm Russian and I want to live in Russia and it's a real holiday, it's a real event. It is one of the most important days uh, in all my life. The process was simple and quick, the voters quiet but determined. So how does it feel? Yeah. We are going to Russia. The United States and Europe have slammed the referendum as illegitimate. But Russian and Crimean leaders, like Prime Minister Sergei Aksyonov, argue it is simply about Crimeans choosing for themselves where they belong. I think that President Obama is a smart man who understands that it's impossible to ignore the will of the majority of Crimeans, he told us. I hope Americans will understand that today Crimeans also have a right to a free choice. Already the international focus is shifting from Crimea to eastern Ukraine. Almost 9,000 Russian troops have massed along Ukraine's border. While in eastern cities, dueling protests have grown deadly. And now Russia says it is considering calls to intervene. In the first sign that Russia may be moving beyond Crimea, scores of Russian troops have seized a natural gas terminal outside Crimea in Ukraine. We've learned that Ukrainian troops have surrounded the area, setting up a tense and potentially explosive standoff. George? Okay, Alex Marquardt, thanks very much. Very tense there. I'm here now with GMA Weekend anchor Biana Goladriga. And Biana, we're getting some confusing reports from the region this morning. You see there military moving in the Crimea. You were able to talk to Ukraine's foreign minister. That's right. I did speak with the foreign minister, and he's hopeful but not very optimistic that this will be resolved peacefully. Uh, but I started the interview by asking him about whether or not that gas plant was seized. We do see it as a provocation and one of those many provocations that Russians are trying to organize uh, on the territory of Ukraine. We will not go for provocation since we wanted to uh, go for a peaceful solution of uh, this uh, crisis. And your ministry actually issued a statement saying that Ukraine reserved the right to use all necessary means to stop a military invasion by Russia. Do you have the military to back up that statement? Uh, look, uh, if you compare the military uh, arsenals of Ukraine and Russia, of course, uh, the Russians' positions are uh, much better, over, uh, overwhelming uh, positions so, and uh, strengths. But however, what we have on the Ukrainian side, something that uh, is very important in confrontations, and this is that all the nation is proud of, is the spirit of Ukrainian people. And on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the height of war, where would you say you feel the situation is right now? Quite high. Quite high and equally disturbing. I asked if he had a chance to speak with his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov. He said no, that John Kerry was trying to orchestrate a meeting. Remember that the Russians have not uh, recognized this legitimate government now in Ukraine. But of course, they have been recognized in the U.S. The, the prime minister and the foreign minister were in Washington last week where they said they got bipartisan support. And meantime, we, we have learned that the acting defense minister, one report that, uh, that of a possible truce now between Russia and the Ukraine at least until March 21st. But as you said, the foreign minister knew nothing. And the foreign minister, the last I spoke with him, was about to get on a flight to Brussels to meet with its EU counterpart. So I have reached out to him, and, and of course, we'll update if we hear anything. Okay, Bianca Goldrie, thanks very much.